welcome to Soul Cafe. Uh, if someone gives you a check, what do you do with it? You just won't stand there and just stay there. No, you don't do that. So let's ask, how do you respond to God's promises? So let's talk about responding to God's promises. See, many of us, when we see the promise of God, we just read it and look at it and say, okay, let's see what will happen. Let's see what God will do. But that's not the way to respond to God's promises. It just won't take place by itself. Just like if somebody gives you a check, it just won't turn to money by itself. See God's promises like check. That means you have to do the right thing with God's promises. You just can't read the check, see the amount, and then pocket it and walk away. No, you're going to have to do something with it. You have to go cash it in the bank or somewhere, financial institution. So same way, let's put it like this. Responding to God's promises is just more than read it and be glad about it. That just won't make it happen in your life. One of the big, biggest pictures of God's promises is seed. And if you're a farmer, you just don't collect seed and throw it to the back of your house. You go cultivate it, and then you can get a rich harvest from there. Same way, God's promises must be responded to well. Let me show you how do you respond. I'm going to give you a Bible passage that will show you how to respond to God's promises and what to do with it. So let's go to Hebrews 13, verse 5 to 6 in New King James Version. Listen. Let your conduct be without covetousness. Be content with such things as you have. For he himself has said, his promise, I will never leave you nor forsake you. So, what happened next? So we may boldly say, the Lord is my helper. I will not fear what man can do to me. Beautiful. So, listen. He says, don't live in covetousness and be happy. Be content with what you have. Now, what do you have? He said, for God has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. That is the promise of God. I will never leave you nor forsake you. What a wonderful promise. God said, with all my power, all my strength, all my wisdom, all my knowledge, all my vast connection, I, I will never leave you nor forsake you. I'll be there with you. I will network with you. I will connect with you. <laughs> so you have a better network connection. I will never leave you nor forsake you. So what do you do with it? Take a look in verse 6. It says, so we may boldly say, so we may boldly say. Not just stand right and looking at it. Okay, God is never living love me. So what? So we may boldly say. Your first response to God's word is this. Say boldly. Conclude. Draw a personal conclusion from that promise. So if God says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. So we may boldly say, the Lord is my helper. The Lord is my helper. So you have to actually welcome that and embrace that and uh, take that as your personal conclusion. It's not enough to hear God's promises. It must become your own personal conclusion. You must draw corollary from there, draw conclusions from there. If A equals B and A equals C, then B equals C. You're going to have to draw that conclusion yourself. Now, if God said, I will never leave you or forsake you, so he's going to be your helper. He's going to assist you. He's going to lift you. He's going to help you. He's going to strengthen you. And then he says something else too. After, say, the Lord is my helper, he said, I will not fear. So, beside you affirming the Lord, you must also respond, I will not fear. So, that means because he's with me, I will not fear. So, beside you collecting God's promises, there's something you have to do yourself. You have to respond to it. You have to, first of all, affirm that God will do this in my life. And second, what would be your response? If God said, you'll supply all, supply all your needs, then stop becoming needy. I mean, if God says, I will watch over you, then stop wringing your fingers because you are going to be vulnerable to certain kind of element. So, he said, I will not fear. I will not show fear because he's with me, because he has promised. Then he says something, lastly, listen to this. He said, what can man do to me? I love this. I love this. So what do you do? Now, you draw conclusion about the Lord, about yourself, and about others. So you take every promise of God and ask yourself, what is this saying about God? I need to affirm boldly here. Second, what should be my own personal behavior through and by this promise? And then finally, how do I respond to my environment because of this promise? So you can see that now. There's this God side. There's your side, there's other side. So if God says something in the Bible, promise you something, then you can say, wow, God boldly 
I believe God will do this for me. And second, therefore, I will do this. And then third, I will respond to others like this. Did you get what I just said? For instance, is anyone sick among you? Let him call for the rest of the child. Let them pray over him, anoint him with oil in the name of the Lord. The prayer of his receive the sick, the Lord will raise him up. If you committed anything, be forgiven him. That's what James 5 says. So what do you do? That's a promise of God. What do you do? You get up and say, the Lord will raise me up. Then you call for the elders. They come to your house and pray for you. And then next, you say you're forgiven. And then you start to respond to others, not just pity party. You start acting healthy, acting strong. So you can see all that stages. Number one, the Lord's my helper. Number two, I will not fear. Number three, what can others do to me? Thank you for listening.